I like the welcome one and all to the MSA Crusaders call. Voice is strong, spirits bright. Join us as we ignite. We're here to share, to inspire, and lift each other higher. With stories of strength, voices that shine. This is our journey, yours and mine. You're tuned into MSA Crusaders, where awareness begins one story at a time. Welcome, welcome to another episode of MSA Crusaders. Hi, my, my name is David Knox. I have MSA, and unfortunately, Daisy will not be, be, be with us today. Um, as many of you know, including myself, the more activity we, we do, the more appointments we have, the more medical doctors we see, the more our voice starts to go. You can, you can even hear my voice starting already, even though we just started speaking. Daisy has had a very a tough week. So we'll keep her in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, definitely look forward to having, having her back tomorrow, uh, next week for our next episode. But the speech issue got me thinking, I'm doing some research about the, the difference between MSAP and MSAC, and also even comparing it to, to, to Parkinson's disease. So that's what we're talking about. We're, we're, gonna talk about, we're going to talk about when the voice becomes a clue, how MS, how how MSAP and MSAC change speech over time, and I thought that this research research I got into was was very interesting. So changes in speech and voice are common and meaningful. They tell us which parts of the nervous system are, nervous system are struggling and how the disease might be progressing. We'll look at how voices tend to change in the two, in the two main subtypes, MSAP and C, and what the progression can look like from early hints to later changes. So MSA, obviously, as we know, is a rare, fast-moving neurodegenerative disease caused by buildup build of misfold alpha-synuclein alpha, 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 alpha protein in multiple brain regions that handle movement coordination and autonomic functions. I'm going to keep drinking here so that my voice doesn't go completely. When these loose circuits falter, the precise coordination of breathing, voicing, and articulation that makes speech effortless starts to slip. In MSA, most people don't have a pure single type of speech disorder. Rather, it's often mixed dys 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 dysarxia, a blend of hy hypokinetic which is soft, monotone, low power speech, ataxic, which is irregular irre 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 rhythm and scanning speech, and sometimes the spastic features. This mixed pattern is a signal of MSA and it helps set it apart from Parkinson's disease where the voice and voice problems is more often purely hypokinetic. A big difference between PD and MSA. So we want to separate the two subtypes and talk about each. So in MSAP, the Parkinsonian path, speech often starts to sound quieter, flatter, and tighter. People describe reduced loudness, hypophonia, mono pitch, a harsh or strange quality, and imprecise consonants. In a disease, as disease burden grows, you can hear artic articulatory decay. Clarity fades as a sentence goes on, and even pitch breaks. Compared with the classic Parkinson's, these changes tend to be more severe and come with more mixed elements because additional pathways are involved. You can probably hear that in my voice right now. Now, there's another key feature we must talk about, laryngeal dysfunction, which I have a couple of those features. Under a simple endoscopic task protocol, 93% of MSA show abnormal vocal, vocal fold behavior compared with more or less 2% of people with Parkinson's disease. But that is a massive difference in one reason the, the larynx has become a diagnostic window into MSA. Clinically, some people believe no, no, noisy breathing called strider, which is a harsh, high-pitched sound on breathing in caused by narrowing of the vocal cords. Strider is much more characteristic of MSA than the part of the It matters for both safety and sleep. Then we have MSAC. MSAC is the cerebellum, 
the brain's timing and coordination coach is hit, is hit harder. Speech often takes on toxic flavor, irregular rhythm, prolonged sounds or syllables, unexpected stops, sometimes audible inspirations between words and slurred articulation. Listeners often say that the speech sounds broken into chunks, sometimes called scanning speech. These, these features map to the cerebellum, cerebellum's role in fine tuning timing and force. So when it's impaired, the cadence, cadence of speech becomes uneven. Here's a twist over time. Both subtypes can converge into the dyslexia I mentioned earlier. So early on, you may hear a P leaning or a C leaning profile, but later on the patterns overlap. So such as Daisy and myself. That's part of why MSA speech tends to sound more complex than partisan speech. Now, the, a somewhat progression about how the voices change over time. Every person's journey is, is individual, but there are common, common arcs. In the early phase of MSAP, a, a softer voice, less pitch variation, loud harshness, occasional slurring. Listeners say, you sound like you're talking through a, small, a smaller straw, especially when tired. In, MSA, in, in MSAC, MSAC, the timing is off. Speech is slow, full stretch, and pauses feel ill-timed. You, you may hear in, in inhalations sneak into the middle of phrases. In the middle phase, clarity drops, consonants blur, sustained phonation weakens, and prosody flattens and becomes erratic. At this stage, both subtypes typically show a mix of hypokinetic and ataxic features. Breathing and voicing coordination get harder. People run out of air mid-sentence and push harder to be heard, which can make the voice sound strange. Classic of me. Laryngeal signs emerge or become obvious. The endoscopy picks up abnormal vocal, fo vocal fold, fold patterns impaired abduction, paradoxical movement, or even fixation, far more than the MSA than in Parkinson's disease. Even without noisy, noisy breathing, the, the larynx is frequently not behaving normally. In the later phases, intel, in, intelligibility can drop substantially. Spe speech may be slow, effortful, and require frequent, frequent repeats. Swallowing and airway issues often accompany voice decline. Dysphagia becomes common and nocturnal strider can appear. In one classic study of 104 people with MSA, 69% of those who developed strider did so within the first four years, and some as early as the first year. A reminder that airway symptoms can arrive much earlier than we might, we might expect. When strider is present, it's, it's not just an audio quirk. It's a safety issue tied to disturbed sleep and, and in severe cases, increased risk. That's why clinicians take it, 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 it seriously and evaluate it with tools like video, pyrosomography, or endo endoscopy, which I, I've, had, I've had a couple of those, which turn out to show vocal cord paralysis or dysfunction and the vocal cord folds this is a function as well. Red flags to listen for. For MSAP, shrieking volume, height or strained, uh, let me say this word. I can't say this word. It sounds like timber, but it's pronounced timber. And for the record, timber is the, is the character or quality of a mu musical sound or voice as distinct from its pitch and intensity, just for reference. And so MSMP, sh shrinking volume, tight or strained timbre, monotone delivery, words blurred at the ends of sentences, sentences any hint of noisy breathing on inspiration. For MSAC, stretched out syllables, choppy rhythm, unexpected voice changes, and those little breaths sneaking into the middle of phrases. For both MSA, P, and C, increasing effort to talk, frequent repeat, repeats, and combined speech swallow breathing difficulties. What helps with these issues? First, teamwork. A movement disorder, movement disorders, neurologists, a speech language pathologist and with neurodegenerative expertise, one needed ENT, your nose and throat doctors.
and sleep medicine. So assessment matters. Objective acoustic testing and endoscopic evaluations can pick up subtle changes before they're obvious in conversation. It may even help to differ, differentiate to differentiate MSA from Parkinson, Parkinson's. Speech therapy, which I have had. While the gold standard evidence becomes from Parkinson's disease, there's, there's growing early stage work suggesting that targeting voice therapy like LSVT, loud, which I've taken, I think it's a five week course, can improve loudness and articulatory speed in some people with MSA. It may even help aspects of swallowing. Small studies can, and case reports, especially in M M M MSAC, show, ben show benefit th through larger trials are still needed. T the, the take home is re it's reasonable to try with the, and experience SOP, speech, speech language pathologies, and measure outcomes. I'll, I'll say, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just stop and say, you know, when, when I was reading about this, the goal, the goal is to, to keep talking. I know it's kind of weird to talk to yourself, but once we, like myself, once I stopped working in a, in a professional environment, my words were cut down by 90, 90%. So you know, we have to exercise our vocal, vocal, vocal cords, every muscle we have for honestly, to keep speaking longer, uh, louder, clearer, longer. So. You know, anytime you get to talk, talk to your family members, nurses, aides, assistants, doctors, yourself, vi videos, or whatever, that's a very important thing to do. You have, as much as you want to keep your, your leg, leg, leg muscles going, you have to keep your vocal, vocal cords going, going as well. Airway and strider management. If there's nocturnal strider, CPAP can reduce the sound and improve airflow for many, but result, results vary. Some people ultimately need tracheostomy, tracheostomy, which, based on cohort studies, can be associated with better survival than CPAP and MSA related strider, likely because it bypasses the laryngeal obstruction. Decisions are individualized, balanced airways, speech, swallowing, and quality of life. See, that's something I'm, I'm not having to come up with because all my vocal cord functions and everything is, is failing. This is going to, probably going to be the, the next step after you know, Botox and medications. Sur 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 surgical procedure to procedure to actually fail would be to uh, have a uh, tracheostomy. Everyday strategies. We want to conserve breath, shorter, shorter phrases, deliberate pauses, in speaking on the exhale, I just did. Make it easy to be heard face to face, reduce background noise, and consider a portable voice amplifier. I haven't heard that one. Pace and plan. Schedule important conversations when energy is best. That's the issue, like with, with, with myself and Daisy. Myself, after I have certain stem cells or procedures or hospital or uh, pneumonia. My voice it would not be a good time to record a podcast because I would lose all my all my, all my voice. Even doing extra activity, like p p picking up the house today, I would definitely lose my, my voice at some point. And just like Daisy, Daisy had quite a few medical appointments, and no, no, no doubt her voice is farther along than mine. But that's why you know activity like hers takes 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 her voice away even 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 faster. Augmentative and alternative communication, text to speech apps, pre saved phrases, and voice banking early while the voice is still strong. I made a video on YouTube about voice banking using an iPhone, and Daisy had mentioned other apps or software yeah, that, that you can use to bank your voice, both for free and at a cost. Swallow safety. If coughing with meals or weight loss appears, get a swallow study with a speech language pathologist guidance, swallowing and voicing travel together. And voicing travel together. They are together. Just like our hearts and lungs are with MSA. If you have a problem with one, you'll have problems with the other. So putting it all together, MSAP, think quiet and tight, flat, with extras, hypophonia, hypophonia, monotone, strain, harshness, 
plus imprecise consonants and pitch breaks, and a much higher likelihood of vertigo dysfunction than, than in Parkinson's. The MSAC think timing coordination problem, extended, extended syllables, irregular rhythm, voice stoppages, and audible breaths. Over time, both patterns over time, both patterns blend into a mixed dysarthria that can significantly impact intelligibility. I think that's the difference you're going to see with uh, Daisy and myself. She seems to be acquiring more of the MSAC than I, than I have. Of course, she's following along too. But if you if you if you rethink really about what I just said, uh, MSAC is time and coordination problem, ex extended syllables, very good rhythm. Voice stoppages. Daisy will speak quite a bit, and she will try to speak in the word, and it will just extend until you don't hear anything. It stops. So for Daisy, it seems like she has much more MSAC than I would have, so it's the MSAP, because I have a lot of room zero dysfunction which is why we wanted to make this video. In closing, voices carry more than words. They carry identity, relationships, and joy. If you are a loved one, loved one with an MSA knows the voice is changing, know that it's common, it's explainable, and there are ways to adopt. Early evaluation, targeted therapy, and smart, smart communication tools can protect connection and safety. I'll thank you for listening and ask for everyone, that, everyone living with MSA, kickers, clinicians, and researchers, you're not alone. We're in, we're in it together. And remember, we are, we are all MSA crusaders. Thank you very much. As we close another chapter, remember you're a factor. In this fight, we're not alone. Together we have grown. With every voice that speaks its truth, we shine a light, we're living proof. Remember, we're all MSA crusaders, and together we can make a difference.